स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू सुनील स्टोटोरियल हम सुनील मेरवानी एंड टुडे वी बी डूइंग द चैप्टर कॉल्ड एज स्टेशनरी वेव्स लेट्स सी व्हाट आर द मोड्स ऑफ वाइब्रेशन ऑफ अ स्ट्रेच स्ट्रिंग व्हाट आर द मोड्स ऑफ वाइब्रेशन ऑन अ स्ट्रेच स्ट्रिंग First of all, how do I define a string? Now, a str when a string of uniform wire and uniform cross section is stretched between two points, then a string or a thin wire of uniform cross section. is stretched between two points and pluck in the direction perpendicular to the length and pluck in the direction perpendicular to its length transverse vibrations are set up vibrations are set up so you will have transverse vibrations set up if you plug the string in a direction that is going to be perpendicular to its length right now if m is the mass per unit length mass Per unit length, and T is the tension on the string. M is the mass per unit length, and T is the tension on the string. Then I can say that uh, the velocity of the transverse waves, the velocity of the transverse waves, is square root of T by M. The velocity of transverse waves. is t by n right now transverse waves generated on the string travel in both the directions right <coughs> and the two end points are fixed so no displacement is possible at the two end points the if i pluck the string so this is your string the wave will travel in this direction as well as in this direction <coughs> it will travel in both the directions the two end points are uh, fixed therefore there is no displacement that is going to be possible at the end points hence the waves are going to get reflected with phase change of pi from here <coughs> there will be 180 degree phase change and the wave will get reflected the two waves interfere interfere with each other and produce stationary waves that is the reason why waves produced by the string are stationary wave once again the transverse waves generated by the string travel in both the directions they are traveling in this direction as well as this direction right and as the end points are fixed there is no displacement possible at the end points right therefore the two waves get reflected with a phase change of 180 degree these two waves will interfere with each other uh, with the nodes at the fixed end and produce a uh, stationary waves the frequency of the vibration will depend upon the number of nodes between the two fixed ends of the string these are the two fixed ends how many nodes can i produce that will determine the uh, frequency of the vibration fine so do we understand this depending upon this there are different modes of vibration of the string do we understand why we have stationary Do we understand why we have stationary waves in a string? Yes, you have a problem. You want to ask me something? Yes, tell me. You have a string, guitar string. Two ends are fixed, right? If I plug the string, the string will move in one direction. Then the string will move in other direction. It moves when it moves from one direction to another direction. There is going to be 180 degree phase change, right? The string will move with equal amplitude in the two directions, right? so i'm going to have two waves that are 
moving in opposite direction 180 degree out of phase therefore they will interfere with each other two waves in opposite direction interfering with each other will produce stationary waves the end points are fixed what will be the frequency of these stationary waves that depends upon how many nodes are produced between these two ends fine do we get this thing clear so i can say that <coughs> transverse waves generated in the are uh, generated in the string in the string transverse waves generated in the string travel both ends right at the ends at the two the two ends are fixed hence no displacement is possible no displacement is possible at these two ends ends no displacement is possible at these two ends and the waves are reflected and the waves are reflected with a phase with a phase change of pi radians fine once i have this i can say therefore the two waves interfere with each other two waves interfere and produce stationary waves and produce stationary waves with nodes at the fixed ends with nodes at the fixed end so now it's very clear that you will get stationary waves from string now let's see what are the different ways in which i can get stationary waves before that i can say that the frequency the frequency of vibration depends upon vibration depends upon the frequency of vibration depends upon the number of nodes the number of nodes <coughs> between the two fixed ends between two fixed ends right now let us first find out what is the fundamental mode of vibration right first you have fundamental mode of vibration what do you understand by fundamental mode of vibration if the string is stretched between rigid supports and it is plucked in the middle it vibrates with the two nodes at the end and anti nodes in the middle this is called as fundamental mode two rigid ends string is stretched between two rigid ends it is plucked from between you will have the nodes at the two ends and the anti node at the center this is fundamental mode of vibration right so when you have just one the string moving once on one side and once on the other side then that is called as fundamental mode of vibration fine do we get this in clear so i can say that if the string is stretched if the string is stretched between two rigid supports two rigid supports if the string is stretched between two rigid supports and plucked in middle and plucked in middle it vibrates 
it vibrates with nodes at the end with nodes at the end and anti node in the middle no anti node in the middle right this is called as fundamental mode of vibration this is fundamental mode of vibration so in fundamental mode of vibration you will have a wave that will be formed fine do we get this thing here now there is only one segment that is formed in this case there is <coughs> case let's assume that lambda is the wavelength of vibration if lambda is the wavelength and l is the length of the string then i can say that the length of the loop guys i have half a wave formed here and the other half wave formed here so i can therefore say that the length of the loop is going to be l by 2 the whole loop is formed it goes on one side comes to the center goes to the other side comes back to the center so you have half the loop on one side and half the loop on the other side so length of the loop is going to be l by 2 right so in that case i can say that therefore length of the loop is nothing but lambda is going to be l by 2 therefore i can say that l is equal to sorry length of the loop is going to be equal to lambda by 2 length of the loop is going to be equal to lambda by 2 therefore i can say l is equal to lambda by 2 therefore lambda is equal to 2l half the wave on this side half the wave on the other side right so in that case now we can say that the frequency Once I have this, I can say that frequency. Let n be the frequency. Let n be frequency. In which case, I can say frequency is nothing but v upon lambda, right? This is nothing but one upon lambda. We said that for a string, the velocity of the string is equal to t upon m, right? Right in the beginning, we said that the Velocity of the string is tension per mass, uh, tension per unit length. So in that case, I can therefore say that frequency, fundamental frequency, is one upon two L into square root of t by m. Right. So that will be the fundamental frequency. This is the lowest frequency with which the string can vibrate. This is the lowest. frequency with which the string can vibrate right this frequency is called as fundamental frequency or it is also called as the first harmonic this frequency is called fundamental frequency or first harmonic fine so this was the first basic mode of vibration let's see higher modes of vibration let's consider another mode of vibration yeah. it's a stationary wave in a guitar when He, when the guitarist plucks the string only once, what you get is the fundamental frequency. That's the first frequency. When he starts, you know, hitting the string multiple number of times, it vibrates multiple number of times, and you get you have more uh, higher frequency that is produced, right? Now let's see this. Let's consider a higher mode of vibration. Let's consider if the wire is plucked at one fourth of the length. 
right? Here you you were plugging the wire in between. Suppose if I plug the wire at one fourth of the length, then the string would generate two segments, right? Let's see. In that case, what you would get is the second harmonic, or which is also called as the first overtone. How do I get a second harmonic of first overtone? Rigid support, string, the string is plucked at one fourth of its length, then the string will vibrate with two segments, okay, this is here. The string is why this is one segment and this is the other segment. So I can say that if the string is plucked at one fourth of its length, if the string is plucked at one fourth of its length. Then the string vibrates in two string uh, segments. And then the string vibrates in two segments. Fine. In this case, there is one more node at the center. You have a node here also. In this case, there is. One more node at the center, right? Uh, there's one more node at the center of the string. You have two nodes at the two end, and this is one more node that is going to be formed at the center of the string. Let's assume that lambda one is the wavelength of vibration. Let Lambda one be equal to wavelength of vibration. If lambda one is the wavelength of vibration, then I can say that the length of the loop what will the length of the loop be? The length of the loop will be equal to the entire length of the loop is divided into two segments. Therefore, I can say that length of the loop. Is going to be equal to lambda one by two, right? Here I can therefore say that length of the loop is divided into two segments. Therefore, l by two is lambda one by two. Therefore, I can say that lambda one is equal to l. L be l will be equal to lambda one. Fine. Now I can therefore say that the frequency of vibration. Let n one be the frequency of vibration. If n one is the frequency of vibration, then I can say n one is going to be nothing but one upon lambda one into square root of t by m. Lambda one we said is l, so I can therefore say that n one is nothing but one upon l square root of t by m. Right? This is called as second harmonic of first overtone. This is called this frequency is called second harmonic or first overtone. Why is it so called? Because because your n is or the frequency that is produced here is twice the fundamental frequency if you look at your fundamental frequency and if you look at this frequency i can say here n1 is twice l right do we understand this now i can have the string vibrating in another mode suppose if the wire is made to vibrate in three segments let's see how do we i get a third harmonic
two ends of the string. Let's see this. You have nodes at the two ends. You have nodes at the center. These are your anti nodes, right? So I'm making the string vibrate with three segments, right? So I can say if the wire is made to vibrate with three segments, if the wire is made to vibrate with three segments in that case I can say that let lambda 2 be the wavelength of vibration lambda 2 be wavelength of vibration if lambda 2 is the wavelength of vibration then I can say that length of a loop right <coughs> in the entire length of the loop I have three segments that means I can say length of the loop is L by 3 right and I have uh, I could also say that this is going to be equal to lambda 2 by 2 half the wavelength right therefore I can say that lambda 2 is going to be equal to 2L by 3 the wavelength is going to be equal to 2L by 3 why lambda 2 by 2 you have your one one of the loop is formed you have half a loop that is going to be formed right so in that case I can therefore say lambda L is going to be equal to 2L by 3 therefore in that case I can say if N2 is the frequency if N2 is frequency then I can say that N2 will be 1 upon lambda 2 into square root of T2 by A or T by M right so I can therefore say that the frequency in this case the frequency in this case M2 will be you have already found out lambda 2 as 2L by 3 so this will be 3 by 2L square root of T by M right this is called as the third harmonic or the second overtone this frequency is called or harmonic or second overtone. Fine, do we get this thing here? So do we understand how we have harmonics? Right? Now on the basis of this you have certain laws of string that are being formed. Let's see the laws of vibrating string. Yeah. Uh, why is n1 uh, 2n in the second power? The last year. Yeah. And why is it the last year? Uh, because n1 is 2n. This. Ah. See this frequency. The fundamental frequency. If you see the fundamental frequency, it is 1 upon 2l, whereas here it is 1 upon l. That means this frequency is twice that. That's how I got this is equal to 2l. Similarly here also if you want I can say I can say also N2 is equal to 3N right okay next let's see this let's find out the laws of vibrating string when if of the fundamental frequency of vibration of a stretch string is given by the fundamental the fundamental frequency of vibration of a stretch string The 
fundamental frequency of vibration of a stretch string is given by n is equal to 1 upon 2L root of T by M. Now on the basis of this I can say that there are three laws of string. So the first law of string is law of length. The law of length says that if I look at that formula I can say that law of length says that frequency is inversely proportional to length if T and M are constant. The frequency is going to be inversely proportional to length this formula tells us. So I can say that the fundamental frequency of vibration the fundamental frequency of vibration the fundamental frequency of vibration of a stretch string is inversely proportional is inversely proportional to its vibrating length is inversely proportional to its vibrating length provided the tension and the mass per unit length are constant provided tension T and mass per unit length are constant so therefore I can say first law is N is inversely proportional to L if T and M are constant second law is called as the law of tension from the fundamental frequency I can directly say guys if you look at this fundamental frequency I can say that the fundamental frequency is directly proportional to the square root of t the fundamental frequency is directly proportional to square root of t that is called as law of tension right so I can say that the fundamental frequency of vibration the fundamental frequency the fundamental frequency of vibration of a stretch string is directly proportional is directly proportional to square root of tension on the string is directly proportional to the square root of the tension on the string provided the length L and the mass per unit length M are constants. So therefore I can say that frequency is directly proportional to square root of T. If L and M are constants. That's called as the law of tension. Third, the third law is called as law of mass. Law of mass, guys. If you look at your formula for fundamental frequency, I can say that fundamental frequency is inversely proportional to the square root of m. That is your law of mass. Fine, do we get this thing clear? So, law of mass. I can say that the fundamental frequency. fundamental frequency of vibration the fundamental frequency of vibration of a stretched string is inversely proportional to square root of mass per unit length 
is inversely proportional to the square root of mass per unit length provided the length and tension are constants. So therefore I can say fundamental frequency is inversely proportional to square root of m if p e and l are constants. This is called as your law of mass. Find the value of this angle. Now, let's also find out the relationship between the fundamental frequency and the density of the material of the string. Let's find out the dependence of frequency on the diameter of the string. Dependence of fundamental frequency on the diameter of the string. Now, let's consider that the linear density, that is your mass per unit length, let's assume that linear density which is equal to mass per unit length is equal to mass per unit length. Now mass per unit length is going to be nothing but the <coughs> volume per unit length into density volume per unit length into density right do we get this thing here so volume per unit length into density will give you a mass per unit length so therefore i could say that mass is equal to volume per unit length now the string is in the form of a cylinder so the volume is going to be nothing but pi d square by 4 right radius is pi r square per unit length so into 1 into the density let's assume that rho is the density therefore I could say that mass therefore I could say that mass is equal to pi d square by 4 into rho right once I have this then I can substitute this in the law of mass by law of mass I can say law of mass says that fundamental frequency is 1 upon square root of right so in that case or directly proportional to equal to is directly proportional to square root of 1 upon m so in that case I can say fundamental frequency is directly proportional to 1 upon square root of pi by 4 d square rho right so in which case I can say that n is directly proportional to square root of 4 is 2 that will come in the numerator d square root of pi rho right out of which 2 pi and rho are constant therefore I can say that fundamental frequency is inversely proportional to the square root of diameter fundamental frequency this is if rho is constant and fundamental frequency is inversely proportional to square root of density if d is constant if i take the value of d as constant then the fundamental frequency will be inversely proportional to the square root of rho Hence, I can say that the fundamental frequency is inversely proportional to the diameter of the string which is called as the law of diameter and is inversely proportional to the square root of the density of the material which is called as law of density. So your law of diameter is law of diameter says that m is inversely proportional to d 
and you have law of density law of density says that fundamental frequency is inversely proportional to square root of density fine do we get the same here okay please stop this here for the day thank you very much